Hey folks, Valentin Demet here and today I have an interview with most of the guys from Flying Squirrel Entertainment, the developers behind Over the Top World War 1. Discussing what it is about, how it will play, vehicles, off-map support and the role of destruction with a showcase of what they have. A second video about the gore is coming early tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Now to the interview. Welcome, let's begin once again with your introduction. Hello, I'm Olaf or Nico from Flying Screen Entertainment. Hello, as well, my name is uh, Volodymyr or FC Admiral. I'm also from Flying Screen Entertainment. Glad to be here. I'm Donner Stormer from uh, FSC. And I'm Estia. Alright, so for anyone who is unfamiliar, let's talk about your team's history and previous projects. Uh, well, our history, as hopefully everyone that knows Flying Squirrel Entertainment is aware, we actually started as a modding team in Mountain Blade Warband a long time ago, and we made the mod Mount Musket for uh, Warband, which was pretty successful, it was very well liked. And we decided to contact Tailwords, the developer of uh, Mountain Blade, to make us a DLC. You know, so we could spend a bit more time, make it a little bit more professional and better. And to our surprise, we actually agreed to it. So we managed to make the uh, DLC Napoleonic Wars for Mountain Blade. So we worked on that for a year, and uh, we released that, and it was, you know, it was very successful. A lot of people liked it, and several other teams um, split out of our team and started their own uh, game companies like Anvil Game Studios and uh, uh, Campfire Games, which made, uh, who both made uh, different games. Um, anyway, we continued. We, we tried to work a little bit more with, uh, with uh, Tailwords on Mountain Blade Snowpanic Wars. And uh, once that was pretty much dead because it reached the end of its life cycle, you know, it was a long time ago. We decided to start working on our on a new game, a game that we made ourselves in Unity. So everything ourselves, not not using someone else's creation and making a DLC out of that. That game is called uh, Battle Cry of Freedom. We released that two years ago in March 2022, and well, unfortunately, I have to say that it wasn't super successful. It was it did all right, but it didn't really catch on. I'm I'm afraid to say. Yeah, personally, I very much enjoyed it, and yeah, that is a shame. So, uh, my question about that is, would there be more support for it, particularly in the single-player aspect? So, as, as I already said, it wasn't super successful, but we tried to... Um, so, basically, the, the game released in March 2022, and it was actually pretty well played in the first two, three months, and then it suddenly dropped off. And as it is with many multiplayer-only games, once the player count starts dropping, and especially in games that require a large number of players to play, which was the case for uh, Battlecraft Freedom, it's just uh, there weren't many players anymore, so it slowly, slowly died over a few months. But we decided to keep working on it anyway, and we worked on a really big patch that introduced all kinds of new stuff, like entirely new graphics, uh, boats, uh, most importantly, uh, we added horses and cavalry. We added uh, the gore system and more destruction, and just in generally like updated the engine, made it better, and added new content. And we released that exactly one year later, also in March. And yeah, well, it it again it catched on for about a month, and then it died again, unfortunately. So. It doesn't make sense for us right now to keep working on it because we already spent a year, even though it wasn't really financially viable, just trying to revive it. And at this point, it would be. It just wouldn't work out for us. It wouldn't oh, be the question was primarily viable. about uh, single player. Um, single player was on the list, but we also ran into some problems with that. We tried to get a bit of single player working for the 2.0 patch. Um, the problem is that Battlecraft Freedom requires large amount of soldiers, right? Like you have battles with 600, mm -hmm. 700 bots on a map. And when you're on a server, that works because the server handles all the bot logic. It handles all the pathfinding, all the, all the moving, shooting logic, whatever for the bots. But when you're in single player, you need to do that for both yourself and, uh, you know, for, and you need to also render the stuff. And that's just, it was really struggling. It was very difficult for us to get that working. 
and uh, so we decided to um, postpone that idea, so to say. Yeah, gotcha. Now to the main theme. What is Over the Top World War One? Uh, so Over the Top World War One is a new game we're working on instead of you know Battlecraft Freedom, as it wasn't really financially available anymore. It's uh, set in the First World War. It's built on top of a of an engine from Battlecraft Freedom, so that we wouldn't need uh, to redo everything from scratch. But because it's the First World War, we did quite a few gameplay changes. So for one, we're not no longer supporting battles with 700 players, but we're still supporting battles with up to 200, which work well enough. And uh, it's a third-person shooter, similar to Battlecraft Freedom, but you can't go into first-person, so it's purely first-person. Um, because we limited our scope and like numbers of uh, players that can play, we were actually able to add all kinds of new features like tanks and uh, artillery, more destruction, and uh, most importantly, what we talked about earlier, single player. A single player with 200 bots is completely viable and doable. So we now support single player for uh, for over the top. Nice. So uh, what fronts will be featured? Uh, in over the top right now, we plan to release just the Western Front, mostly uh, Belgium and France. So the stereotypical uh, World War One you uh, you usually think of when you think you know when you hear World War One. But if the game does well, we can definitely expand into other fronts like Gallipoli or uh, Africa or Arabia. All right, a little more on the vehicle side. So I'm pretty sure I saw a uh, plane pictured in the promotion material. Would those be in two or is it just like off map support? Planes aren't playable, as in players cannot play uh, on a plane, they can't fly around with it. But a uh, player playing as an officer can do a call in which will uh, call in a bunch of airplanes and they'll drop bombs on the place or drop a incendiary bomb to burn the trenches and stuff like that. We currently don't plan on adding uh, playable airplanes, although it would be really cool. It's just way beyond the scope at the moment. I can maybe perhaps taken down by machine guns or... Uh... We were thinking about that and t technically it's possible. Right now we didn't do it. The problem is that then we need to make the planes a lot more powerful because, you know, if you can shoot them down, then the call-in is basically useless if you manage to shoot them down. And uh, so for balancing reasons, we haven't really done anything with it yet, but we might definitely experiment before release. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's talk about the game modes. Right now, we only feature one game mode. The uh, reason for that is that we had a bunch of game modes in Battlecraft Freedom, and I think we learned our lesson that it's just way better to have one game mode that is uh, streamlined. And the game mode is basically the typical conquest you know uh, from other games like Battlefront or Battlefield, where you capture several objectives and you hold them. And, you know, for holding objectives, you gain score and uh, you win if you reach a certain score. But the difference here is that in this game, there's always one team that from the beginning holds all the caps. So all the capture points are held by one team, which is the defender. Then when the game starts, there will be a timer. And during that timer, no, uh, neither of the teams can leave their spawn areas, but the defender can use that to start digging in and reinforce her spawns. Once the timer is over, the attackers can start attacking. And you know if they, match, uh, if they manage to capture all the caps, all the capture points, they will win the round. And if they don't, then the defender wins, wins the round. Gotcha. And single player is basically this, but offline. Uh, yes, the single player is uh, identical. Just there's bots instead of humans. Yeah. From what I saw, you we do have uh, off-map uh, support, planes, I think, artillery too, right? Yes, so call-ins can be uh, all kinds of artillery, like airstrikes, mortar strikes. Uh, and then there can be airplanes that can drop uh, small bombs or incendiary. Uh, bombs, which you know, burn a large area. Yeah, the thing about Battle Cry. Yeah, yeah, you're saying gas. Yes, obviously, it's a first world war, so you want gas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing about Battle Cry was it was pretty hard to handle, so you didn't really have it going all too much. I remember when I was covering it, even though it was leaving very nice effects, it, you didn't still have it all that much. So I read it in the playtest, the recent one I had, and it was actually quite cool seeing the 
effects of explosions happen much more often. Yes, uh, because like every soldier carries a grenade now. There's a lot of artillery. You can have the off map call in. Yep. So there'll be a lot more destruction going on. And uh, the whole gameplay is sort of centered a little bit around uh, around digging in. Um, for the playtest, to be honest, we noticed that it wasn't powerful yet uh, enough yet. So we actually tweaking it to be that, uh, you know, it, that it's easier to dig in, that it's faster to dig in and create uh, defenses. So that you can really create a cratered and entrenched landscape. Yeah, like uh, my impressions from the uh, playtest was it was actually really awesome because I remember playing the Sonzo, you think all the pre-made craters, all the pre-made half rack trenches, and y here you actually have it in the game itself happening dynamically, which was quite awesome, gotta say. Yes, uh, we try to get the game focused around that. Yeah, so let's uh, can we just uh, showcase it. All right, so I'm playing as officer. I'll uh, do. Uh, let's see. Let's start with the smallest thing first. The the call in for airplane bombing. So I'm just gonna call it in the open field here, or maybe like the trench in the field. So you'll see that there's uh you know it indicates with a flare where it's gonna drop, and then the plane will come in. There it is, and we'll start dropping bombs. And now if it's, you know, it's dropping a bunch of very small bombs, they don't necessarily even create craters, all of these bombs, mm -hmm. only a large number, a uh, small number of them create them. You did notice, well, maybe, I don't know if you saw it, it uh, destroyed some of the barbed wire there, because uh, barbed wire can be destroyed with grenades pretty easily. Also the easily. vegetation? The vegetation, yes, that push more also. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next call-in, largest call-in uh, that can destroy stuff is a mortar barrage, so it's definitely a bit more powerful. Uh, I'm calling it in now, also in the same position. You can actually hear the artillery shooting in the background, and it will take a few seconds for it to come in and land here. And you'll immediately notice that that was way more powerful, that it created oh, yeah. uh, a bunch of craters. And... Uh, Started a few smaller fires, destroyed sandbags. Now, uh, I'm out of credits. Let me shoot real quick. Actually, we can also show the fire bombs. I'm going to call it a little bit further, right? Uh, over there to the tin roof. So the fire bomb is uh, relatively small area that is affected but it does deny players from walking there so if you drop it in a trench you know no one can move through the trench and it will destroy objects over time so the fire will actually burn stuff and i've killed thunder yeah and dramatic death animation yeah uh, yeah it killed that little tree over there and um Still don't have enough credits for the creeping barrage. There's the sandbag. So it's not extremely good at destroying stuff. It's mostly an area deniable uh, denial tool. It will last for a relatively long time as well. Yeah, I'll I remember seeing it in the playtest. Yes. That and the flame force. Yes. <laughs> They were uh, a tad bit OP. Yeah, it's also one of the things we noticed and, you know, changed. Yeah, yeah. we're working on them already. <laughs> that's what the uh, playtests are for. Alright, so that's done. So the, the strongest one is a creeping barrage, and it drops a whole bunch of very large shells in, in a line. So I'm calling it in now again on the same spot as the mortar barrage earlier. And yeah, so you'll notice a lot of stuff here is destroyed now, and there's a lot of craters. Yep. And if it was with players, I'm sure a bunch of them would have uh, would have been killed by that. Yeah, 
Then, uh, in terms of destruction, um, obviously, other stuff can destroy stuff. Like, the grenades will dig small craters and can destroy stuff. It's just, you know, not as powerful. So you might require mm -hmm. a few grenades to destroy something. The tanks, main gun, and the artillery uh, that's playable in the game can destroy objects. Yeah, let us showcase. Um, when you're in a tank, you can, of course, also drive into objects and they will be crushed, they'll be destroyed. Depending on the tank. If you have a small tank, you'll not be able to do destroy everything. But uh, the larger tank, like uh, the A7V over here, will be able to destroy most objects if it's driving and into them. Can even topple trees. Yes, it can definitely topple trees. Yeah, I've seen it on uh, when he was on the way. So they too can could actually be used uh, in a way to destroy enemy fortifications, you know, to, to make a path through barbed wire or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does look uh, pretty different from what we had, from what we, we had before. Yeah, definitely. It's just a moon landscape, really. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I saw that coming for me. <laughs> Good when I'm in god mode. Yeah, as for the buildings. Will you guys be doing any improvements? Uh, there haven't been any improvements yet uh, compared to Battlecry Freedom, so um, if you want to, uh, sh if you can showcase it, of course, it's just um, the walls can be all destroyed, so one wall at a time. But the plan is that once enough walls are destroyed, the entire building will collapse. So mm -hmm. you can also remove buildings from the from the map entirely. But, um, yeah, you know what? Let's you know, do a we're, transformation we're to this location, yeah? yeah? Uh, which location? This one. The house. The house, yeah. Uh -huh. The house, <laughs> the <laughs> garden around it, the tents. Yep, right. that's possible. I have a nice camera position, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're still uh, we're still updating stuff. Um, still adding props slowly over time. There's 5,000 props in the game, so it will take some time to get all of it destructible. But it will be there before release. Yeah. Uh, the deformation tech is very cool.
Okay guys, so final question. What are the release plans? Uh, we're currently looking at a release within the next year. We don't have an exact date yet. Uh, we plan to polish the game as much as possible. Because it's, it's still in pre-alpha, so it's very early. Uh, we try to polish it more than our previous games, so to say. Um, streamline it, and if there's like unfinished features, we'll actually remove them from the game just to make sure that everything works 100%. And it's uh, perfect. But yeah, I, I can't give an exact release date just yet. Yeah, so we're gonna try it somewhere around next year, I heard? It's possible that it will drag out to early next year. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I do think it is promising. It does have some... It does scratch some certain niches. Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's a, it's not as large scale as Battlecraft Freedom, but I think in the grand term of, of games, it's still rather large scale. And even with just 50 players, it's, it feels huge sometimes. Uh, there's so much stuff going on. It's very chaotic. I think that's uh, a good thing. In some games, it can be bad, but I think this game, chaos is good. I think that's exactly what you're looking for for first World War game. Yeah, um, by the way, what was the reason to ditch the first-person view? Again, polish. We just want to uh, make sure that everything works 100% and it's like, working well. So we weren't very satisfied with with a first person view we had. It wasn't that great. It was basically just a camera tacked on top of your head. So there were no customized animations for it. Uh, so for now, no first person. And if we ever get enough time to work on first person, intensively work on it, then we'll actually add it. All right, gotcha. So yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you so much.